Hi, I'm Lily. And I'm Julia. We are two high school best friends and college roommates with an interesting dynamic. And we are here to culture each other on different aspects in pop culture. We talk about all things music, movies, musicals, Disney, and more. This is Pop Culturing My Best Friend. Welcome back to Pop Culture, my best friend. Yeehaw. Yeehaw. <laughs> I'm so excited to be back. Our second episode. Woohoo. Episode two. Woohoo. Two. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so out of it right now. <laughs> She's tired. I'm tired. We've I'm... had a long week. <laughs> <laughs> um, so our feedback on the last episode was really great, and I'm super, super excited to hear how much you guys are into it, and we, we didn't get a lot of critiques, so we're going to continue basically what we did last time. Yeah. I've enjoyed feedback from a lot of you. I'm yeah. sorry if I sound so out of it right now. <laughs> <laughs> I've been struggling. Anyway, um, but yeah, no, I'm very glad that people are actually listening. <laughs> yeah, it's really cool um, to see the reaction that you guys have been having and all the really nice comments. And um, you guys have been reposting and sharing. And oh, my gosh. Yes, we have had so we have so many shout outs. And mm-hmm. I know I said I'd only do three, but I wanted to do all of them because I yeah. felt bad. We Just- have so many shout outs and questions <laughs> that we're not even doing sleepover games this episode. <laughs> um, while it's manageable, we'll try to do as many shout outs as we physically can yes but we will be doing sleepover games next week yes and next week's gonna be super fun super special and we'll talk more about that near the end Mm -hmm. but for now we're gonna talk about nonsense news (laughs) that's gonna be the sting once i create it all right so our first piece of nonsense news Mm -hmm. um let's go back to last week's episode where we were talking about Shrek 2. Ah, uh, yes. The masterpiece. Yes. Specifically Far, Far Away Idol. Now, we had a question um, where it was, like, who sings for Simon Cowell? Or oh, is Simon yes, Cowell, yes, yes. like, actually singing? Well, nobody answered my question. So I answered my <laughs> question myself because it was bothering me. And Simon Cowell does not sing in Shrek 2, which is so sad. Oh, I want to hear Simon Cowell sing. I figured so it wasn't him because, like, he's never sang for anything else that I've heard, and they are not going to get that man to just sing for Shrek 2. Only. Bro, I want to hear Simon Cowell sing so bad because he's just, like, so judgmental of other people. I want to yeah, be judgmental. Like, can you sing <laughs> yourself? It's like, I love you, Simon Cowell, but, like, I want to judge your singing. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, the guy who sings for Simon Cowell in Shrek 2 is Rick R-I-S-O. I'm not okay. even going to try and pronounce his last name because I know I'll say it wrong and I don't want to <laughs> offend. Um, and he is a Christian music artist. Oh, so, that's interesting. Yes. Check yeah. him out if you feel compelled. All right. That's cool. Yes. All right. Indeed. What do you have next? Um, our next piece of news. Now, yesterday. Okay. So today is February 11th. Yes, it that is. That we're recording. And yesterday... Um, I received this piece of news, and this singular piece of news started a train of really good news just coming at me, (laughs) and I'm like, this is what's going to save the year. Oh. Yes. Strong words. I posted it on Twitter. I said, this 2021 is going to be the year, and this is the reason why. High C Orange is coming back to McDonald's. Yes. Oh, my gosh. I remember the, the outrage when it was taken away. I'm like, I can't wait for it to be back. Because guess what? I've never tried it. No. <laughs> <laughs> this will be my first time trying High C Orange. How dare you? <laughs> High C Orange is like childhood. And um, I didn't eat McDonald's for a really long time. And I just started... <laughs> like eating it again <laughs> and now I'm really excited <laughs> so yeah that that will be one of the things that saves 2021 mm-hmm. because the next piece of news I got literally 10 minutes after this was that the clone high revival has been officially announced by HBO Max I was sitting in my bed and I remember hearing you gasp and then just minutes later <gasps> yes <laughs> so much like oh my god okay I've been on the, I've been writing. I've been the conductor of the struggle, but <laughs> conductor of yes. the struggle. 
<laughs> for like a week now. And then yesterday, so much good news started coming at me and it's been so exciting. <laughs> so I love Clone High. Um, I recently got into it this year as many other people did. It's had a resurgence in the last year. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, the ending really pissed me off because <laughs> they didn't get a second season. <laughs> So, I'm hype about that. Um, And our fourth piece of news that I have, because I kind of narrow it down to three, (laughs) that I had to cut two other news pieces because there's just too much. Mm -hmm. But today, February 11th, 2021, will go down in history because Miss Taylor Swift herself Mm. went (laughs) on Good Morning America to announce that tonight at midnight or tomorrow morning um same thing (laughs) (laughs) she is oh my god she is releasing her version her re-recorded version of love story and on april 9th her whole fearless re-recorded album is coming out oh yay and i sobbed (laughs) when i found (laughs) out it was the only reason i woke up this morning and I'm so glad I did because I've just been liking and posting Taylor Swift t- tweets all day. <laughs> yeah. So that's all I got. So by the time you hear this, um, go listen to Taylor Swift's new love story because I said so. All right. <laughs> um, so I have three nonsense news stories uh, and they aren't quite as exciting as hers, sadly. Um, well... First of all, today, or not today, tomorrow, Friday, um, I'm performing a music seminar, um, an art song that I've been working on, and I'm very scared, so please wish me luck, because playing in front of all of your music peers is not a great time. (laughs) Um, And then today, February 11th, is Marty and I's two-year and ten-month anniversary. Gross. Gross. (laughs) Gross. <laughs> I mean, sure, but I'm I'm excited. Um, we got two more to go, and we're at three years. How time flies, am I right? Um, and my third story is something that I know I'm not the only one who's excited about this because um, a lot of people love lounge fly backpacks. They're mini backpacks. They are awesome. They're a trend with the Disney Park community, and just people are wearing mini backpacks everywhere. And they're coming out with um, a couple new Sanrio backpacks that are adorable. And I love them. And I hope to pre-order one of them soon. And yeah, so those are my news stories. So if you're into Loungefly, check out what they're coming out with. Yep. <laughs> yeah, I tried to burp, but nothing happened. Um, yes, so that was Nonsense News. Ding! Our next segment yeah that's what it's called our next segment is walt lily world ding Ding. (laughs) i'm writing stings for all of the segments so it's a little bit more entertaining but Mm -hmm. i have yet to figure out the logistics of them so i'm just gonna (laughs) sing them right now Um, i love it yeah all right all right what we talk about (laughs) i have five stories for today's walt lily world i'm shooting for six every time but i can never find enough i think five is a good number um so first first of all super nintendo world the opening it opened yes i showed julia (laughs) some videos of it and you seem to be interested i yes i wish there was Moo Moo Meadows, though. Oh, so sad. Um, there are two rides in the land as of right now. I think they're in talks of a Donkey Kong one, which is interesting. Interesting. Um, but right now there's Yoshi's Adventure, which is a dark ride where you ride on Yoshi's back and you take a little trip to the Mushroom Kingdom. And Mario Kart Koopa's Challenge, which is Mario Kart the ride, basically. Yeah. It's really, really cool. But it doesn't have Moo Moo Meadows. Which is a shame. So what's even the point? <laughs> <laughs> um... Otherwise, they, um, they have Luigi's Mansion, um, and they have Rainbow Road and the Mario Kart ride. So there are still some popular tracks in there, but no Moo Moo Meadows. Nope. Um, the walk-around characters of Super Nintendo World are adorable. They can blink, their mouths move. Toad is the cutest little thing I've ever seen. His little arms are hilarious. Um, Princess oh, I Peach. never got to see Toad. I know. I forgot to show you. Um 
Princess Peach, she speaks sentences, which is wild, instead of hearing her go, oh, oh, and all sorts of dumb stuff. You sound like a bird. Wink, wink. <laughs> wink, wink. We'll be talking about birds later. Um, and the last thing. The restaurant in Super Nintendo World is also super, super cute. Um, what was that pizza thing? Oh, they have a little um, little toad mushroom pizza bowl, yeah, which is super that cool. That looks good. Yes. Um, you can buy Princess Peach's cake that she promises you in, like, every game. And it looks like it's going to be really interesting. However, a lot of things are mushroom flavored, which is strange. Um. All right, so that's it for you the said it. Okay, this is not about Mario or Disney or anything, but this is what I just thought about because I'm, like, dying. But, like, you were, like, you finally get Princess Peach's cake that she um, that she keeps offering you at the end or whatever. Mm-hmm. And what that made me think of is a portal. Where- <laughs> oh, the cake is a lie. <laughs> I don't know why, but that's what I thought of. That's funny. Oh, can I talk about the Yoshi ride for a second? Yeah. I was very underwhelmed. Oh, um because okay. okay first of all it's hecking slow well that's that's expected from a dark ride of that kind um, but also it was like like nothing okay like you went through one tunnel and then it was done that's true it is very short however there's a lot of like what the camera person didn't show is that you were above everything. Yeah. So you can see all of the cool moving yeah, things. Yeah, no, I, I saw that. Year. I think it would have been better if they did it, like, around the park. Mm. I think instead of just, like, around the block. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? That would be really cool. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. Um, the things inside the tunnel are really cool. I don't want to spoil too much for people who haven't seen it. Um, but... If I should be on the creative team. For <laughs> if you're into uh, Mario Galaxy and um, the Yoshi games and Baby Mario, Baby Peach, that kind of stuff, um, th- that's all represented in, in the park, which is really cool. Um, okay, now done with Universal, <laughs> on to more Disney. Um, so, Epcot Flower and Garden Festival, which you have never experienced before. No. Um, Epcot has... Um, little festivals, they have uh, Flower and Garden, Food and Wine, uh, and they have Festival of the Arts. Um, Flower and Garden Festival's coming back. This is the festival that they were in when COVID happened. Uh. So we didn't get to experience the full festival uh, of last year. Um, but what they do for Flower and Garden is they, they get these cute little topiaries of all the characters, and they're adorable. They have a butterfly garden that you can go walk through. Everything's nice and flowery and cute. Well, the topiaries are on their way back. Um, There's already a couple standing in Epcot right now, which is really cool. Um, And another new story from Epcot, um, the new Leva Legacy was unveiled this week. And what League of... What Le- what League of Legends? What what Le- League of Legends? <laughs> what Le- a Legacy used to be was they had these big stone panels in front of Epcot before you walk into the park, and they had pictures of people who had paid to have their pictures on um on these stone things, huh. and you could go find yourself and be like, oh yeah, that was me, and whatever year I purchased this. They had it going from 1999 to 2007. And there were lots of people and they removed them because they're redoing the the front area of Epcot. Mm -hmm. So the new Leva Legacy was just open and they look really cool. There's like these walls instead of stone stone panels. Um, And it's all like the cool new retro Epcot, like rainbow kind of theme. It's awesome. Um, Next story I have is in Hollywood Studios and Toy Story Land. Um, The new sit down barbecue restaurant uh, round, round up rodeo they finally filed a permit for the sign of round up rodeo we've been waiting for this restaurant to open for a really long time it got delayed due to covid and now it's on its way hopefully soon um, i'm excited to see what it's like because in my opinion hollywood studios needs some more restaurants um there's not too much there that i am a fan of so i'm hoping that this will be some new good food And my final story, um, what I'm planning on doing with these Walt Lily World segments is on the days where a prominent attraction opened or closed, I want to give a little history on whatever that thing was and talk about it and 
when it opened, when it closed. So this week on Monday, which was February 8th, um, Superstar Limo, which was a ride that opened in Disney's California Adventure. It also opened on February 8th of 2001. And Superstar Limo is a long story. It's highly debated in the Disney community as being the worst ride ever made, which is really interesting. Why is that? Um, most people say it's, first of all, horrifying. Second of all, slow. <laughs> what is it? <laughs> um, Superstar Limo what? was... Um, originally planned to be a high-speed chase away from the paparazzi. Okay. Um, so this was going to be all in the Hollywood area of Disney's California Adventure, and it was going to be, like, this really cool thing. And it did not happen how they wanted, because there was, um, Princess Diana, that whole situation happened. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So they had to cancel their original plans for this ride. And it ended up being a very, very slow limo ride through, uh, the city, And you'd pass by caricatures of celebrities, which were these awful looking animatronics. I will put a picture of them on Instagram. They are so scary. And that's all you do. Oh my God. (laughs) That's so funny. (laughs) Lily's alarm just went off to tell us that dinner is starting. (laughs) It's time to get some food. Oh Um, my God. (laughs) um, Well... On February 8th, Superstar Limo opened. It only lasted less than a year. It was so unpopular. It opened um, on February 8th, and it closed on January 11th, 2002. So it didn't even last a year, which is wild. Mm. So, yeah, Superstar Limo. It's awful. And I will post pictures of the terrifying (laughs) animatronics. And that's all I have. Interesting. Mm -hmm. I want to ride this ride. I will show you a video of it when we're done, because afterwards you will not say the same thing. (laughs) I don't don't know, man. I don't don't know. Anyway, so that was Walt's Lily World. Ding! Ding. Alrighty. Now let us move on to repeat of the week. I don't have a sting for this one, but (laughs) ding! Ding! (laughs) Okay, so this week was hard because... Yeah, it was (laughs) <laughs> Neither of us really had a repeat of the week. Yeah. <laughs> Which is weird because I always have a song of the week. Same. And always. then I finally got one. But I'm going to save it for next episode. Because mm-hmm. it goes with the theme. next episode yes. a lot better. Um, So instead, I picked a random song okay. that has been occasionally <laughs> popping in my head. Um, Yes. What is your random song? Oh, right, right, right. Okay, my <laughs> random song <laughs> is Hurt Me Once by Ben Platt. Oh, okay. Um, From his Sing To Me Instead album. Okay, now, here's the thing. I technically have not listened to this song in a year. Like, almost a year exactly. Oh. Um, Yeah, I am a Ben Platt stan, mm-hmm. but... Some things happened where I haven't listened to his album in a year (laughs) because um, I have memories attached to certain songs. And so Uh, I just like haven't been able to listen to them. But I'm going to listen to his uh, Radio City Music Hall special on Netflix this weekend. That's what I've decided. Mm. Yes. So hopefully everything goes well for you then. Yeah, no, I'll probably be crying the whole time. But anyway, um, one of the saddest songs on his album is Hurt Me Once. And I remember a year ago, like, around this time, um, this song was in my head all the time. All right. Now, let me go through some of the lyrics. Oh, okay. (laughs) So we have... If you have to hurt me, hurt me once. If you have to end it, get it done. You have all these choices. I have none. You're all that I have to lose. And if I'm disappointed, it's because you're not the person I knew. If I had it my way, I'd be kinder than you. Oh. I don't think you've heard that song before. I haven't. Oh, my God. Okay. So, basically, the song is like... Ben Platt is getting suspicious of his significant other that they're cheating on him. Mm. And he's like, hey, 
if you're gonna hurt me, just go ahead and get it done. Like, yeah. you know, don't drag it out for this long. Mm -hmm. And I very well know how that feeling is. <laughs> <Right. Yes. laughs> um, and I, you know, I we've talked a lot this week about things that happened in the past. Yeah. And it's been nice opening up to somebody. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so for some reason, this song has just like reappeared in my mind for the first time in a year. Yeah. And it's a really good, it's a really good song. It's fantastic. So it's sad. It. I love sad songs. Sad yeah. songs are my favorite genre of songs. She has a whole playlist of sad boy music and it's <laughs> wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> so that's my repeat of this week last year. All right. Cool. <laughs> um, I also could not come up with a repeat of the week. Um, the only song that's been stuck in my head is another song from Cats. And I felt like you guys probably didn't want to hear about that for a while. Um, eventually, I'll do a waving through the musical window of Cats and just get all of that out of the way and we'll never have to talk about it again. Yay. Just brush it under the rug. <laughs> Um, so the only song that I've been thinking about this week is my journey piece. Um, so I'm playing, um, Mozart's concerto in D major. Mm, what a good, wow. <laughs> <laughs> what a good song. Um, there are no standout lyrics for this song, obviously, because it has no lyrics. How does this song go? Sing it for I cannot even attempt to do that for you. Well, I don't I don't know names of classical songs or else I would sing it. You won't know the song. This is not a very popular like it's a popular flute song, a very popular flute oh, song. Okay. But it's not a popular enough song for you to, to know it. Ah, uh, okay. Um, so one thing interesting about this song that I'm going through right now is that my teacher, she is making me assign personalities to the music. Um, which is a thing that I don't know if you've ever heard of before. Yeah, but... no, yeah, I have. Oh, okay, cool. So, um, if you guys don't know about this, you need a feeling, or some people use colors, um, but you need something to associate to your music so you can play it with more feeling or mm -hmm. with a color in mind, I guess. Um, so, right now, the personality of my piece is a fat, rich man on a yacht. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> I'll have to show you the song later so you can understand the fat rich man on the yacht thing. But there are these, like, I guess, I don't know if they're arpeggios, but they, like, go down and it sounds like, ha, 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 ha. Uh. And it's like a fat man, a fat rich man <laughs> laughing on a yacht. It, I don't know. I'll have to explain this. I love that. Um, so, yeah, that's that's all I have for my repeat of the week. <laughs> my, my fat rich man on a yacht song. Interesting. All right. Oh, um, speaking of repeat of the week, oh. I am creating a Spotify playlist specifically mm -hmm. for repeats of the week. So every week we will add two new songs onto the playlist and I will put it up on Instagram for you guys mm -hmm. to go and follow. Hopefully Concerto in D Major is on Spotify. I guarantee you it is. <laughs> oh, all right. Yeah. So that was repeat of the week. Repeat of the week. Ding. Ding. <laughs> cool. Our next segment in the lineup of segments is waving through a musical window. Ding. Ding. <laughs> we have to make that a thing. It will be merch. Oh, for sure. Oh my gosh. I'd buy that. That'd be so funny. Ding. <laughs> <laughs> so today on Weaving Through a Musical Window, we will be talking about The Phantom of the Opera, um, which yes. was... It feels like Phantom of the Opera is basically every theater kid's first show that they've seen. Maybe mm. not in actual theaters, but for sure the movie. The movie. <laughs> yeah. I think definitely at least the girls in our generation. For sure. Yes. Like, I don't know yeah. any anyone who hasn't seen the, the Phantom movie. And if you haven't, oh my gosh, please see it. It's such a good show. Um, or <laughs> at least see it in person, maybe. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, the movie's a little, a little strange after you've seen the actual show. It's it's kind of hard to go back to. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you haven't seen the show or the movie, here's a synopsis for you. Based on the novel Le Fantôme de l'Opera by Gaston Leroux, Phantom tells the story of a masked figure who lurks beneath the catacombs of the Paris Opera House, exercising a reign of terror over all who inhabit it. 
He falls in love with an innocent young soprano, Christine, and devotes himself to creating a new star by nurturing her talents and by employing all of the devious methods at his command. Devious methods. Hmm. I mean, <laughs> he pretends to be her dead father. <laughs> so I think, you, yeah, it's right to say devious methods. I think they're a little more than devious. My man can throw fire. I, <laughs> that's pretty devious to me. <laughs> so thank you, Playbill.com. Yes. For you, all of our theater needs. She's just begging for a sponsorship from them now. I love them. <laughs> um. So, we're going to get started with our favorite songs. Uh, Would you like to go first? Sure. All right. So, my first favorite song is Past the Point of No Return. I cannot explain why this is my favorite song. It just (laughs) is. It's so good. I mean, there's no fault for it being your favorite song. Um, It's a wonderful song. Uh, I think it's my mom's favorite song from the show, too. It's so, good. It's great. Um, <laughs> this specific song is supposed to be a song that the Phantom wrote himself. They're performing his musical, Don Juan. Um, yes. And, man, is it good. It's, like, kind of angsty, kind of fiery. Like, Christine's cool. The Phantom puts on, puts on a fake Italian accent to pretend to be uh, the actor in the show, Pianji. Um at the beginning of the song to try to lure in Christine, but she figures out it's him real quick. Um, yeah, yeah, it's a really, really cool song, and watching it with the with the actual acting on stage is awesome. Yes. All right. What's your second song? <laughs> um, my second song is "Masquerade." Mm, Masquerade yes. is a classic, and it is. Sir Lord Andrew, Sir Lord, <laughs> Sir Lord Andrew Lloyd Webber <laughs> sprinkles it throughout um, the musical. Yes, yes. Um, I, I really, really like the music box version of Masquerade. Um, there's a little monkey with symbols music box that goes around throughout the show um, that the Phantom owns, and it plays the theme Masquerade. It's so yeah. Gay. But then they all sing the song at an actual masquerade. And my question right. is, is that how do they all know this song? Mm. If this song came specifically from this monkey man monkey music man? box, <laughs> how do they all know this song? I want to know if this music box was mass produced, mm-hmm. and that is why they all know this song. Yeah, and, that's really interesting to think about. Like, yeah. Is there another song that he wrote? Maybe they heard the music box coming from the catacombs and they just sing. No, what I'm thinking, my theory is that this music box mm-hmm. was mass produced okay. in France and every <laughs> everybody in like a certain generation had one of these music boxes. Oh. And it became so popular that the creators of the music box came out with like a, a song right. for it That's and an now at theory. every masquerade party it's tradition that you play this song we need to look this up to find out what the actual <laughs> story is but i like that i'm one. sure there's not an actual story <laughs> it's just the thing what's your third song um my third song is prima donna mm-hmm. because every mm-hmm. time i listen to it i feel that i am the prima donna <laughs> i really like this song too i was actually considering it to be my third song uh, and it, I don't ever hear anyone talk about it. It's not. Like, it's a underrated. Song. Um, but it's really, really nice. Yeah. Um, there's this one line um, in the 25th anniversary soundtrack. Um, I'm sure it's in the actual movie one too. But just the way how it's said in the anniversary soundtrack that I like. Um, he says theater at, at one point, and just the way he says it is really like funny, and I, I enjoy it. Interesting. Mm-hmm. Where in the song does he say that? Oh, gosh. I can't think of it. Now. I have to go back and listen to it too, but that's one of my favorite parts. Oh, um, yes. Is that all you have? Yeah. All right. <laughs> so my favorite song is "Music of the Night." It's my ringtone. Um, it's my favorite favorite song, and I I really really enjoy it. There's this one chord. That just gets me, man. It's a good chord. Like, have you ever heard, like, a song where there's just, like, this one specific part that stands out to you? But, like, in this song, it's just a chord. And it's so, like, crunchy, but also nice. And, like, ugh, I love it. It's chef's kiss. My favorite part. Um, And my next favorite song on the list is All I Ask of You, which is a really nice duet between Christine and Raul. 
Mm-hmm. It's it's so pretty, and they have such a great relationship in the song. And he just like all he wants to do is take care of her. And all Specifically she wants to do. in this song, yes, it's because really nice. okay, I my boyfriend knows this, but when I watch things, mm-hmm. I like to nitpick the relationships and things. Oh yeah, yeah. So I have a lot of complaints about their relationship. Mm-hmm. <laughs> However, um, at this point, it's nice, and still throughout the whole thing, they don't have an awful relationship. Yeah. It's not great, but... I mean, they got issues, but, mm-hmm. like, you know. The relationship's still better between the Phantom and Christine relationship, which is <laughs> horrifying. Um, however, in the sequel to the show, Love Never Dies, the relationship is awful. Yeah, it just um, gets worse. They trampled on the the original show, like, completely. I, yeah. We're going to talk about this in my next Waving Through a Musical window. It'll be Love Never Dies. And we will get into all of the details of why we hate this show. Yes. I... <laughs> really do not like it um i've seen it a total of one time i've seen it in person and i've also watched the movie of it i lily made me watch a movie and within the first five minutes i guess the entire plot <laughs> and i guess the twist ending and i yeah yeah we'll get into this um on the next episode but um i i still really like all i ask of you and it's like a good glimpse into like their their relationship and before it gets absolutely destroyed in the yeah. next show. All right. So next, we're going to talk about if we could play a role, who would we want to be? And this is really difficult for the show. I'm not a soprano. Everyone's so talented, and I don't think I'm I not a anyone. soprano nino. I am a second soprano mm-hmm. who can also sing alto. Mm-hmm. Um, so I wrote an A, but I want to play Don Juan. <laughs> Oh, yes. I'd love to see you play Tom Wong. No, I want to play the Phantom. I want to do a gender-bent version of Phantom, and mm. I want to be the Phantom. That'd be really cool. <laughs> because um, I can be the Phantom. Be. <laughs> <laughs> um, I wrote down Christine, because the, everyone wants to be Christine. Um, however... I have no hopes. If I could be in the show, again, I'd want to be in the orchestra because, oh, man, the music is so nice. And I could just imagine playing the chord and it'd be so much. <laughs> no, like, I mean, if I could sing the parts that are in this show, oh, I would. like, in an imaginary world, mm-hmm. if I could, I would want to play um, the prima donna. Oh, what's her name? Carlotta. Yeah, I would oh, want to play yeah, her. I so feel like cool. I would do such a good job in that <laughs> role, but I can't <laughs> sing it. Um, I yeah, if I could be, if I could sing like Christine, which I am a, I am a soprano to, to like, I can sing as high as she can, but I can't sing great. So if I could sing better, I'd love to be Christine. Um, and then finally, we're going to talk about our thoughts about the show in general, which we basically have covered. Um, yeah, the bases, but... I love this show. Yeah, it's I have my a sign when they came to TPAC last time. I have like a signed poster from all the cast members mm-hmm. on my wall. <laughs> <laughs> I love it so much. It's like one of my most prized possessions because I don't know. I don't have many things mm-hmm. like that, and that is just like one of my prized possessions. Also, like oh my god. Okay, so when I've only seen it live once, and it was the last time they came to Nashville, oh, yes. and um. Like, okay, the guy who played Rao was so freaking hot, and <laughs> I, oh my gosh, my mom can testify for this if she remembers, Um, but we went out to the lobby, mm-hmm. and we went to go and buy the poster, because they were doing a bunch of um fundraisers, selling things for, um. I don't remember what it is, but I will put it on our Instagram once I remember what it is, because it's a good cause, and um, one of the things was that you could get, if you paid a lot of money, Mm -hmm. you could get a backstage tour with the guy who plays Rao, and he was in the lobby, (gasps) and I swooned. (laughs) Ooh, that's cool. Um, I've seen it twice in person, and the first time we went, me and my mom sat underneath the chandelier, so when it dropped, it dropped, like, I'd say, like, maybe a foot and a half mm-hmm. above our heads. And I never thought I was going to die during a show before until that moment. <laughs> it was so scary. <laughs> it was just there. Like, we could, like, if I stood up on, like, a seat, I could touch it. It was crazy. So, yeah. yeah. All right. I think that's it for Waving Through a Musical Window.
Yeah, I think I feel like I had something else, but I can't remember what it is because <laughs> now I'm just distracted by this hairband that she's has... just unraveled a hairband um in her lap and it was falling apart and it was bothering me. So and now it is unraveled. Yeah, but look how fun it is. Like, look at <laughs> we'll put a picture of the unraveled <laughs> hairband on Instagram. I guess. <laughs> It's just, it's so entertaining. Well, right. that was Waving Through a Musical Window. I will be doing that next week. Mm-hmm. I have yet to decide what it will be, but it is a toss-up between a few of them. Don't M- spoil. Maybe Wicked? <gasps> I what? haven't decided yet. You can't offer that up, then people will beg you for it. <laughs> uh, doubt. <laughs> so that was... Waving through a musical window. Ding! Ding. (laughs) Uh, We're going to take a short break Mm -hmm. and to hear a word from our sponsors. Yes! And then we're going to come back and talk about the movie we watched this week. Mm -hmm. It'll be terrifying. So scary. (laughs) Thank you to Anchor for sponsoring Pop Culturing My Best Friend. If you haven't heard about Anchor, it's the easiest way to make a podcast. It's free to use, which is always a plus in my mind. There's creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. Anchor will also distribute your podcast for you, so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many more. Creators can make money from their podcasts with no minimum listenership. It's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. I know that we have absolutely loved our experience using this platform. Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started today. Welcome back. Ding. Ding. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, so this week we watched The the Birds. birds. So scary. Um, The Birds is directed by Alfred Hitchcock. Mm -hmm. Uh, I'm going to give a synopsis before I start talking about it. (laughs) Because I feel like that's important. Uh, Melanie Daniels, played by Tippi Hedren, meets Mitch Brenner, played by Rod Taylor, in a San Francisco pet store and decides to follow him home. She brings (laughs) with her... (laughs) She brings with her the gift of two lovebirds and they strike up a romance. One day, the birds start attacking the children at Mitch's sister's party. A huge assault starts on the town by attacking birds. This movie is directed by Alfred Hitchcock, and it was made in 1963. This book, this movie is based on the book of the same name by Daphne... Yeah. By Daphne? Daphne, yeah. yeah. I will give her all the credit on Instagram, because unless you want to try and pronounce it, it's in bold. I Daphne can't du Maurier. That looks like it might be right. Yeah. Uh, this um, in 1952, and it was part of her The Apple Tree Collection. Hmm. And something I found out was that Connor McPherson also adapted her work into a play in 2016. What? Oh. Yes. It was not very well known because it did not do very well. Oh. Okay. <laughs> um. Yeah, this synopsis was a combination of Wikipedia and IMDb. (laughs) Um, So right off the bat, the first thing I noticed when we started this movie was that just throughout the credit sequence at the beginning, there were so many birds. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Let me give you my ridiculous extent. Oh, before we even begin, let me give you my interesting. Oh, yes, for sure. For sure. I love this movie. It is my favorite Alfred Hitchcock movie. And um, before we begin, I would like to start by saying that though there is a lot of controversy surrounding this film and Alfred Hitchcock himself, that is not what we are talking about. Yeah. We are speaking on our thoughts of the film only. Mm -hmm. So Um, Alfred Hitchcock wasn't that great of a guy, but you know what? (laughs) We're not talking about that right now. We're talking about the movie. Uh, The Birds is really good. I love it. Um. Here are some interesting facts about it. Okay. And this this first one has to go with what you said about the opening sequence. Oh, cool. Yes. Okay. Interesting fact. There is no background music in this film. Oh. The only time there is ever music is when somebody is actively playing music. So if you notice, the only time there's music is when Melanie was playing the piano mm-hmm. in that one part or the children were singing. 
I hate that part. <laughs> this makes the film more eerie and realistic. Yeah. This is something I've always I noticed. I noticed that. I didn't think about it. Yeah. But yeah, now that you say it, there wasn't any music at There's all. There's no so music. music. There's just bird sounds. There's just bird sounds, and it's lovely. That's and why I've... it was so uncomfortable feeling. Mm-hmm, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Oh, my God. Okay. Another interesting fact is that when this was first shown in a Lon- in a theater in London, as the audience was leaving, the trees had speakers in, in them and were playing bird noises no. as the audience was walking no. out. Yes. This is one of the things I learned in film appreciation. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they, they did a whole segment on the, this movie. We did a whole Alfred Hitchcock fun time hour. <laughs> yeah, so she knows a lot about this movie, which is why she wanted to review it. <laughs> yes, I also have an irrational fear of birds. Yes. <laughs> um, I had it before I watched this movie. Um, I can't exactly pinpoint where it came from. Mm-hmm. Uh, I can think of, like, a few instances, but, like, not where, like, it all stemmed from this in my childhood. I just, like, <laughs> don't like birds and I'm scared of them. I like birds a lot. I, I really wanted a bird when I was little and I still continue to want a bird. <laughs> Cannot really. <laughs> um, another interesting fact is that the most expensive shot from this film was cut. What? Yeah. Really? Yes. That's interesting. And when we get to that part of the movie, I'll talk a little bit more about that. Okay. Um... Uh, yeah, that's all the interesting facts okay. I have for right now, I think. So, oh, wait. Oh. No, I'll, I'll say that when we get to it. Never okay. mind. <laughs> so, the intro. So many bird noises. It, like, to an uncomfortable yes. extent, um, the entire <laughs> opening credit sequence was bird sounds, and then even throughout the pet shop was just bird noises. So, that's that was my first experience with the movie. It was just birds. Mm-hmm. Like, they weren't kidding. They called it the birds for a reason. Yeah. <laughs> There's so many birds in this movie. Um, and just a general thing that I noticed is that everyone in this time period, which this this movie was filmed in the 60s, is always so pretty. Like, yeah. like everyone's so pretty. Like every human who came oh, out of the 50s. And one 60s. of the one of the things I have written down that kind of goes with that is that Annie Hayworth, who's the school teacher, mm-hmm. um, to me has always looked like an alternate universe's version of Vanessa Hudgens. <gasps> Whoa. We'll put a picture up of her on Instagram. Yes, that's crazy. Yeah. We need to make like a comparison side by side. Yeah, no, I've Um, always thought she looks like her, especially when Vanessa Hudgens was in Grease Live. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Huh. Okay. Another thing that I noticed just about the people in general before we get into the deep dive in the movie is that everyone's very shifty. (laughs) Very shifty and suspicious. Like everyone looks like they have ulterior motives throughout the entire Mm -hmm. movie and it's really weird. Like I get bad vibes from every character. Yeah. Especially Mitch, but like everybody. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, no, that was one of the things I wrote when I was doing this in class. (laughs) That everybody's so sus and I don't understand it. Okay. Um... Okay. Well, I don't have that much written, so what do you have? Um, well, I wrote, the first thing I have for the first part of the movie, they're in the pet store, and this is when um, Mitch meets Melanie. Why does she go along with this? Like, I get it. She's like the prankster or whatever. Yeah. And, uh, first of all, I'm not even going to get into that. That's, wh- <laughs> why is she a prankster? Why does this give Because her- she's rich, and she can do whatever she wants. Okay, because daddy will just bail her out of jail. Okay. Yeah. She <sighs> explains that. Yeah, but like... Why? Why not? I guess so. Why not? I mean, whatever you got a wants. lot of money. You got a lot of free time. But what else like, if do? someone asked me in a store, oh, do you work here? I'd freeze up and be like, no. no. I have been asked that multiple times, specifically in Target. <laughs> I don't know what it is about me. I don't own. I, okay. The specific thing that like stands out to me. I was like in a corner, like looking at something in Target. Mm-hmm. This lady comes up to me. I was wearing green. And she was like, green. do you work here? And I'm like, no. no. <laughs> People ask me if I work in Target all the time. And I'm like, no, sorry. I could probably help you find something, though. I'm in here a lot. <laughs> um. So after the pet store scene happens, my next note is why is Melanie Melanie? Why is Melanie following him to his house? Like she has to pay for gas and birds just to prank this man she just met. Because well, first of all, she's rich. She's, she's just rich, and she's got nothing better to do. So like, but that's so weird. Well, and also 
he's mysterious and right. she's intrigued by him. I mean. Right. But couldn't she just like ask someone for his number and just call him up? The f- her first interaction is breaking into his home to bring him birds. <laughs> Which is so strange. So, like, I have written down, and something that's always, like, been like, huh, well, maybe this is just the time period they live in or whatever. But, like, why does everybody just freely give out other people's information? Yes. Um, there, Melanie went to a school, um, to ask the school teacher what, um, Mitch's sister's name was. And she just tells her this random woman who is not from her town who she does not recognize comes into her school building and asks for a child who's her student's name like nowadays that's like unheard of that's like that would never happen and even the two men who she meets at the beginning like she yeah she asks like for, for her name too. they're like where she's like where does he live and they're like oh he lives over there yeah and like where does the little girl go to school like oh she goes to school over there oh, what's the little girl's her? name oh it's annie no it's not it's whatever it's it's kathy but yeah um so okay and my next note is about her going to talk to the school teacher to to meet to ask about kathy's name um she rings the doorbell, and what what's the teacher's name? Oh, she rings Annie? the door. <laughs> yeah, she <laughs> rings the doorbell, and Annie, like a normal person, says, "Who, Who is, is it? it?" And Melanie says, "Me." Me? <laughs> what? <laughs> what does that mean? I think uh, okay. So I love this part just because this is so something I would do. <laughs> she doesn't know her, and she says, "Me, <laughs> me." <laughs> I think it's just like. Um, she wasn't able to think up something, like, on the fly oh, fast enough. And so right. she was like, uh, it's me? me? <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Oh, my God. Um, do you have anything around this area that you want no. to talk about? Okay. So, my next note is, uh, Melanie, she goes to find a boat so she can, go, uh, so she can drive the boat across the lake to get to Mitch's house. Um, and what I wrote down is she's driving a literal boat to his house. She's committed to the bit. Yeah. <laughs> like, I respect her for that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, she's going all out for this prank. She bought him birds. She's driving a boat to his house. She's about to break into his house. Dude, people think that girls do weird things when they have crushes on guys now. Look at this movie. <laughs> right. It's crazy. Um, <laughs> and the next thing I have written is she broke into his house this is like prank YouTube all over again. <laughs> I don't know if you guys remember the era of pranksters on YouTube oh where they like kidnap each other and like do all kinds of crazy stuff. But this is something that they would do. They would do crazy stuff yeah. like this. Okay. Um, um, you have anything? Uh, no. Okay. So <laughs> the next thing I have is a general statement about the whole movie is the romance subplot is so uncomfortable. It is, especially because this movie takes place within a time time span of like two to three days. Yes. And, and by day two, they're like madly in love with each right. other, and it doesn't make sense. I wrote this when they were. I guess was it in the diner? Is that where they were? Like a restaurant scene. Um. Where oh yeah. She meets his mother for the first time yes and they're just lying and lying and lying to get out of like the idea that they're romantically linked in yeah. front of his mother and it's just so awkward like everyone in this movie just lies and lies and lies and they tell all this stuff and then like later when they're like oh yeah that was a lie everyone's just okay with it like yeah. they don't get repercussions for this and yeah it's really weird there's a lot of lying in this movie um yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, but before the diner scene, or why they're even in this diner, right? <laughs> Melanie, uh, he finds the birds in his house, mm-hmm. and he sees her going back across the water, <laughs> right. and so he drives his car to meet her at the docks. Well, while she's um, driving her boats <gasps> yes. back, the first bird attack happens at 25 minutes into this movie. Exactly 25? Uh, around 25. Okay. Cause I didn't feel like rewinding it to figure out the exact time. <laughs> um, yeah, so they go into the diner to try and take care of her yes. bleeding head. Because a seagull swooped down and punched her in the face. Basically, that's, yeah, Basically. that's what happened. Um, um, okay, so going off of that, I have something written that's, Why are the birds rabid? That was my next note. Okay. <laughs> so what makes the birds go crazy? 
That is still up for debate. And it kind of depends on your interpretation of the movie. Okay. Um, I haven't read the book. I'm actually going to this week because I found a PDF file of it. It's oh. like really short because it's a collection. It's part of a collection of stories. Mm-hmm. So if I have any updates, I'll tell you. But my interpretation is that it's um, man versus nature. Mm. And, um, you know, the fact that they're just tired of the human race and nature is trying to come back and claim its territory. I see. Yeah. Um, There was a character in the diner scene that said something, or not in the diner scene, it was later in the movie or at some point. Mm -hmm. Um, I think it happened in the diner, but not at the specific part. Yeah. um, Where they they called either Melanie like a witch or something and that all these birds are coming because she's here. Which is also interesting. See, I thought that before, but like also... That doesn't make a lot of sense yeah, to me. Yeah, right. Because she's just a because prankster. Because while this is happening, and we'll get to this later, while all of these things with the birds are happening, you they, like, play the radio every once in a while, and it's happening everywhere else, too. Oh, yeah. So it wouldn't make sense that it's right. Melanie. Like, that doesn't make sense at mm-hmm. all. Good um, theory, but, like, no. Yeah. <laughs> so the next thing I have written down is I really like Annie and Melanie's gossip session. Yeah. Um so did you did you did you catch the um the Oedipus reference? I did that Annie made yes. <laughs> that made me so happy. Every um, time I hear it, I'm like, I know what that is. <laughs> we just read Oedipus um in my English class and that reminded me of that. And also we did Oedipus in our theater class. Um so every time I hear Oedipus, I'm like, Oh yeah, I know that story. <gasps> I know who that is. I get oh excited. my god. <laughs> um but I really like the scene because it gives the, the ladies, like, some bonding time, and mm-hmm. I love their banter. I don't know. I think it's really funny, because, like, yeah. Melanie, she's, like, obviously she's, like, just, like, lying, and she's, like, giving all kinds of, like, weird, like, things. But then, like, mm-hmm. Annie, she's, like, I don't know, there's something about her that's, like, so cold, but also, like, interesting. Well, I mean, like, she's really sus of Melanie, because mm-hmm. the whole reason Annie is even in this town is because she was in love with Mitch at one point yeah. and she moved there to be with him and then he's like nah and this lady shows up and, and this she... new lady shows up and Annie's like oh I don't think so mm-hmm. <laughs> like, what are you up to <laughs> okay so I think after this is when the party happens yes which I don't have any notes written about the party itself but that scene is horrifying <laughs> Yeah, so Kathy, Mitch's younger sister, mm-hmm. is having a birthday party, and Melanie is there, and Annie is there, and the mom is there, and um, they're just having a grand old time, yeah. and then <laughs> uh, birds just start attacking all the children. They just start swooping in trying to kill these kids, which is so scary. Like I said before, it's horrifying, and I am not into the, uh, that idea at all. Yeah. Um, so... That's all I had about that scene. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. What happens after that? The children go home. Yes. And they're sitting in the living room, chilling, and birds just start flying in through the chimney, yes. like swarming the house. <laughs> um, how they did this scene is they edited in birds, um, like on like a frame in front mm-hmm. of the movie, and I wrote the edited in birds are hilarious they're batting away nothing and it shows and it's yes, really really funny they are that. they yes the birds the big birds that you see yeah. are edited in but there are real birds yes. but the real birds if you look closely the real birds are just chilling on the ground yeah i know yeah. that but the, the, the edited in I, birds are so funny i think it's so funny like he, he's got like a pillow that he's using to swat him away but you can see the birds in front of the pillow and like i don't know it's just hilarious yeah to look at. it's really funny but also really terrifying <laughs> right because again there's so many birds in the there's house. so many and how they didn't get injured throughout that scene or like not majorly injured is insane to me yeah um, um so they call a policeman mm-hmm. to talk about birds just flew in my chimney and tried to kill us yes um and i wrote why is the policeman so quick to defend the birds is he a bird <laughs> <laughs> oh my god <laughs> yes um so they're telling the policeman about this and he's like oh it just happens sometimes and he just comes up with excuses for everything they say. but there's like dead birds all over the right. house <laughs> and like everything's broken and like out of yeah. place and dude's like Chaos. oh it's fine it happens like are you a bird 
<laughs> he is the mother of the birds. Um, oh my god. Yeah. Yeah. He's yeah. a bird. He's a okay. bird. What next? happens after that? I don't even remember. Um, well, my next note, I think, happens a little while later. It's children singing in horror movies is so scary. <gasps> oh! Oh my god. Before that happens, I remember now. Oh, because okay. the whole reason they're at the school happens before oh, that. Oh, yes, yes, yes. So, uh, um, the chickens that they have at their house, mm-hmm. that Mitch's mom has at her house, um, aren't eating the feed. Yeah. And And everyone else's chickens are eating. Yeah, I should have written this down because this is kind of the beginning, besides the seagulls thing, this is kind of the beginning of the bird revolution. Mm. And um, so Mitch's mom, I wish I could remember her name, but she ends up, I might have it written down, but I don't, no, I don't. Um, She goes to the guy who sold her the feed to be like, hey, I need new feed. Well, she walks in on him and his eyes have been gouged out by birds. Yeah. Birds um, broke into his house and gouged out his eyes and killed him. Didn't they break in through the windows? Yeah. 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 Hate that. That is, <laughs> nope, no thank you. That is the first official bird death of the movie. Yeah. So, yeah, it is. Mm-hmm. So, in shock, the mom drives home mm-hmm. and passes out and Melanie's taking care of her and she's like hey go get Kathy from right, school right, right. because this like there's a bunch of windows in the school and the birds are gonna go and like get her yes so Melanie goes to the school to go get Kathy um and on her way in she can just like you can hear the children in the school singing in the background yeah and- Children singing in horror movies, like, in every movie there's ever been a child singing, something bad happens right afterwards. Yeah. So, um, she's like, Annie, I gotta talk to you. And Annie's like, uh, give me a minute. So, Melanie goes outside and she sits on this park bench and, um... You all you can hear is the children singing in the background. Yeah. Well, behind Aunt, uh, M- Melanie, <laughs> <laughs> while she's smoking her cigarettes, mm-hmm. uh, birds start accumulating onto the playground. Yes. Oh my gosh, they're these what like blackbirds, right? Yeah, or crows or ravens or whatever they are. What? I, there's a discussion about it yes. later in the movie, but we never find out exactly what they mm-hmm. are. I think they're crows. They're all over the playground equipment. It's so creepy looking. They're yeah. all just waiting. Yeah. And this is like one of those things where um, whenever you talk to somebody who has seen the birds before and they're like, oh, yeah, every time I see birds on like a telephone wire oh, or yeah. a thing, this I think of that movie. And, and it's- speaking of the waiting, that's one thing I wonder. The birds attack in waves. Yes. Which is really interesting. Mm-hmm. They don't all come at once. No. And it's different birds every time. Like, yes. the first time it was uh, seagulls. The second time it was, what, like, little finches or something? I, yeah. They, they said what kind of bird it was, but I can't exactly remember. I don't remember. They were smaller birds, though. Yeah. And then the the blackbirds. Yeah. It's so strange. Yeah. I think it's just, like, word is starting to get out to right. all the birds that a revolution has begun. <laughs> And I have another thing about birds attacking later um, mm-hmm. that have to do with the love birds. Why don't they attack? <gasps> oh my god. Okay. When I was researching this movie on Wikipedia, <laughs> I the one of the themes in this movie is love and right. violence. Mm. So, um, because all the other birds attack except for the love birds because yeah. they... I, don't quote me on this because I honestly don't remember and I'm really upset that I didn't write it down. But they represent Mitch and Melanie's love for each other. Interesting. Their love that has lasted two days. Yeah. I see. Yeah. <laughs> it was something like that. I wish I wrote this down because yeah. now I'm upset because I thought it was really interesting and I just forgot. Um, <laughs> that sounds right. Um yeah. My next note is, why did Annie have the kids go outside? So the context for this is Melanie and Annie finally talk, and she talks about the blackbirds. She's like, hey, like, this is going to happen. Like, they're, they're going to come in through the windows and hurt these kids. So the, their bright idea is it's not to hunker down somewhere, like, maybe in the basement or, like, something like that. It's oh, to yeah. take all the kids and go outside and walk back to your houses. 
they send the kids off in separate ways too. They're like, oh yeah, if your house is nearby, walk to your house. Oh yeah. If, if it's you not, go to go the to hotel. hotel. <laughs> they just send these kids off. Yeah. And they, the kids get attacked by birds when they're outside immediately. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because they start running and screaming and yeah. making noise. And I'm like, honeys, be quiet. Yeah. Why do they do this? I don't know. They would have been fine if they stayed inside and boarded up the windows or if they went to the basement or something. But yeah. they just get sent outside in their separate ways to go I home. mean, plot-wise, I mean, like, okay, realistically, like, no, it doesn't make sense. But, like, plot-wise, it's to have more action. Yeah, that's true. So, but, like, I think a group of kids and two adults, and I'm sure there are other classrooms in the school, they could have handled all these birds with their books and desks and stuff. But if they're sending these kids home to be by themselves until their parents get home from work, yeah. the birds are going to fly in through the windows and get the kids anyways, you Yeah. Know? Um... Man, yeah, so yeah. the kids get attacked by birds, and then we go back to the diner, yes. and people are, like, be making conspiracy theories, mm-hmm. and then um, <laughs> so much chaos erupts. Yes. about the conspiracy theory thing. Um, there's this one guy in the corner, this Irish guy, and I wrote, the doomsday guy is always the Irish guy, and it's true. It's yeah. so funny. There's just this guy, and he's like... It's the end of the world. The, the end of the world. The birds are going to get us. It's just, yeah. yeah. Um, and then my next note is, the birds blew up the cars. <laughs> so this is the chaos. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah. Um, they peck through this oil thing. And the oil starts spilling on, on the ground. And there's this is like a big parking lot where there's lots of people. And... All these cars are next to each other, and the oil seeps over to this one specific guy. Like, these birds meditated this. They're smart birds. And yeah. this guy stands next to his car and lights a cigarette, and then everything blows up. Yep. And he's hearing these people yell at him not to do it, and he just does it anyway. He's like, what? What? And then Hello? he lights a cigarette, and everything blows up. Yeah. Um, these are smart birds. And then birds, right after the fire happens, they start attacking again. Right. This I- is where <laughs> the famous scene where she's, like, stuck in the telephone booth mm-hmm. trying to get out and the birds are swarming her happens. Yeah. yeah. So, um, around this time, um, Annie, which we don't find out until a little bit later, she dies by birds. Yes. And I wrote, why on earth would you run it, run outside if there was an explosion? Windows and the radio exist. Like, you could look outside and see it, or you could, like, listen to the radio and, like, the report about it. Well, I mean... Well, Annie, she hears the explosion, and she talks about this. Like, uh, Kathy tells them, like, why Annie ran outside. Her and Kathy, Annie and Kathy, they ran outside to see what was going on. Well, maybe they couldn't see out and the that's window. And that's when Annie died. She got attacked by birds as soon as she came out. Yeah. So that was... And that, that's they go and get Kathy and bring her... Yeah. Back. Um, Yeah. Everybody's looking for somebody to blame about the birds. Mm -hmm. And they just all decide to blame Melanie, even though that doesn't make any sense at all. So, Um, yeah. So, they're back at his Mitch's mom's house. They're hunkering down. They're boarding up the windows because (laughs) they're noticing that the birds are coming in waves. They, like, come and they attack and then they go off and accumulate more birds and then come back and attack. Mm -hmm. People wonder why I'm scared of birds. Oh my god. Okay. (laughs) Anyway. But, so they're boarding up the house and they're just waiting. Melanie goes up to the attic, doesn't she? Uh, She gets attacked by birds separately. That happens later. Okay. Yeah, that happens later. Um, dun, 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 dun. <laughs> I'm trying to see if I have I only have two more notes left, and it's about... Like, um, I and have stuff. things, but they're more just, like, facts about the people in the movie. Okay, so they board up the house, and they're yeah. just waiting for something Something to happen happen. and you can hear the birds like they start accumulating they're starting to peck in like mitch is trying to like mitch (laughs) mitch is trying to like reboard up the windows because they're getting through he puts like this big like armoire thing in front of the door um it's crazy Mm -hmm. and then the power goes out Mm. and this is my favorite shot in the entire movie one of my favorite shots in cinema is when Okay, the power goes out, and you get, like, a low-angle close-up 
of the mom's face like Mm -hmm. and she's standing up and they're looking because it's also gone silent like the birds made this loud noise and they just went completely silent and it pulls back and you can see like the only light in the entire shot is like the lamp in the living room and it's so cool like that backlight and then it zooms back and you can see melanie and mitch like that's one of my favorite shots in cinematic history it was really cool (laughs) it's so awesome I love it. Um, oh, I wrote, <laughs> I wrote Melody, Melanie, what the heck? Melanie must smell rank because she's been wearing the same clothes for three or four days. True. Yes, that's very true. She's been staying overnight um, at, at Annie's house and she didn't bring anything. She was no. expecting to stay overnight. She just did it. She wears the same green outfit every day. Yeah. Um. So... Everybody falls asleep except for Melanie because the birds have left Mm -hmm. to go accumulate again. (laughs) And Melanie's like, I don't know what she's thinking, but I... She goes into the attic. No, she goes into a bedroom. Oh, is that what it is? Yeah, I'm thinking that she was looking for the bathroom or something. Oh, okay, that makes sense. Yeah, because she never says what she's doing. Alfred Hitchcock has this thing, has this rule in in, um, filmmaking where it's show, not tell. Mm. yes um so you show as much as you can without using dialogue so i think that she's just going to the bathroom so she gets a flashlight she walks upstairs it's that's why i thought it was the attic because she went upstairs yeah it's stereotypical like horror movie stuff where she like slowly opens the door when she opens the door there's a hole in the roof (laughs) and a bunch of birds are inside and she gets trapped in there i don't remember how i think she walked in for some reason Mm -hmm. and the birds just start attacking her um this scene of the birds attacking her took them seven days to film oh my gosh wow yeah that's crazy oh yes why because well i'm sure they use more real birds for this i mean because he this director is a perfectionist Mm -hmm. (laughs) Mm mm-hmm I mean, the same thing with the shower scene in Psycho also oh, yes, took yes. days to film. But it's iconic now. It is. So. Mm-hmm. Um, but she gets taken out of there. She's, like, bloody and broken. Bloody and, and bro- she just is kind of, like, I'm not in a coma, but she's just out. She's just out of it. And they're, like, Mitch is, like, we have to help her we have to take her to a hospital Mm -hmm. and then the mom is like we'll never make it and he's like we got to go to san francisco Mm -hmm. and so mitch goes outside to get the car ready and birds there's just so many different birds and they're just sitting there yeah just waiting like they're literally covering the town it's really scary it's horrifying and then they all get in the car and they just yeah, leave. they get in the car and they just leave. And that's, that's the end of the movie. I wrote, I like how the ending is vague because you don't know what happens. To them. I love a vague ending. They could have made it out by the next wave, but also, yes, there are birds in other places too. Yes. Who knows what happens? So the last shot of the film is them driving off. Mm-hmm. Well, the original last shot of the film was the most expensive shot of the film oh. where it shows them arriving in San Francisco and you see the Golden Gate Bridge is covered in birds. Oh. And that was the most expensive shot of the film and they took it out. Oh, that would have been so cool. I know. I wonder why they took it out. I don't remember. That's really interesting. Like, I know there's a reason, but I don't remember it. Um, So, that's all I have on the movie before I get into the actors. That's all I have at all. So, whatever you have next, go ahead. I have some things about the actors that I found out. Okay. So, um, Tippi Hedren, who plays Melanie, Mm -hmm. I found out that her granddaughter is Dakota Johnson. What? You know who Dakota Johnson is, right? That's cool. Yeah, I thought that was so interesting. Huh. Um, Rod Taylor, mm-hmm. who plays Mitch, is he's been in a lot of things. But mm-hmm. one of the things I know that you know, he voices Pongo in the 101 Dalmatians <gasps> movie. Oh, oh my gosh, I just watched that the other day with Marty. <laughs> Whoa, that's so cool. So I thought that was interesting. And something that all of the main actors, so Kathy, the mom, Melanie, Rod not Mitch. <laughs> Mitch. Um, something they all have in common is that Alfred Hitchcock used to have this 
um, TV show mm -hmm. called Alfred Hitchcock Presents, where he would basically do just like mini horror stories, oh. which I love the show. It's available on Hulu and I watch it a often because mm -hmm. it's really interesting but all of them had a role at one point or another in his show oh, before they did the birds that's really cool yeah hmm. so that was the birds that was the birds did you enjoy the birds i enjoyed the birds i'm so glad because <laughs> it's one of my favorite movies i was i was hoping for more death i will say <laughs> from a horror movie i was hoping for more well horror. i mean i'm sure there was we just didn't see True. it <laughs> i was hoping for more like horror horror but like obviously this is like a pretty no this thing. is my kind I of really horror enjoyed it. i don't like horror movies but this is my kind of horror movie it was so nice. that was the birds um let's take a break shall we shall we yes <laughs> We're not doing sleepover games today yes. because we have lots of shout outs to give. Mm -hmm. Thank you for shouting us out. Thank and you so much. Continue to shout us out. Please. And we will we will mention you at the end of our podcast if you do. Yes, yes, yes. We also have questions, but we're gonna mm -hmm. do that after yes. shout outs. So first shout outs come from Instagram. Mm -hmm. Shout out to one of my besties, my bae, Ruby Morris. Ruby. <laughs> I love you. Thank you so much, Ruby. Thank you so much for your continuous love and support. Mm -hmm. And I miss you. Our next shout out is also from Instagram from one of our friends, Valicia. Valicia. Thank you so much. Okay. Our... Go on. The... Right. I had a hang now. Okay. <laughs> the next shout out is for Morgan Donna. Morgan. Thank you so much, Morgan. I wish we had a fanfare sound effect. Right? That would be, really I know, that'd be funny. awesome. Well, thank you so much, Morgan. So we funny. love you. Our next shout out is from Madison. Again, thank you so much, Madison. Ooh. Madison's been like one of our number one supporters. She's our hype high. girl. Thank you, Madison. She's our roadie. <laughs> our roadie. Okay, and our final Instagram shout out is from <laughs> Haley Ebanks. Thank you so much. I love you and I miss you, Bean. All right, our next shout outs are from Snapchat. Thank you so much, Amber. Amber. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> we Next. don't we don't have uh, an official Snapchat because nobody uses Snapchat anymore, but we do. Mm -hmm. um, but if you personally know us and you tag us on your Snapchat, yes. then we'll shout you out. Um, our final. Uh, uh, shout out <laughs> is from Facebook and it's from my dad, <laughs> your dad, <laughs> who shared our link on Facebook. So mm -hmm. thank you, Father. Okay. <laughs> cool. So those were our shout outs. Yes. Please continue to share <laughs> our podcast. Thank you, everyone, so we much will for supporting us. Shout you out. Mm -hmm. All right, so I asked for questions on Instagram. Yes. So we have a few. Um, the first question is, what are our thoughts on the second Shark Boy and Lava Girl movie? It's interesting. I think the character of Guppy is a very <clears throat> interesting character. I have not watched it. Mm. I watched Drew Gooden's review on it, and I was like, oh, I don't want to watch it. <laughs> um, I'm kind of boycotting it because Taylor Lautner is yeah, not. Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's like my one thing. Which, like, I understand why, but also, like, what's even the point if you're right. not going to have him? <laughs> It's an interesting concept, that's for sure. Yeah, so I have not watched it, but I'm probably never yeah. going to watch it. <laughs> that's my thought. Okay, whoa, there's a hair. There's hair everywhere. Oh my, oh God. my goodness, we okay. are shedding. The next question is, what inspired us to make said podcast? Mm. We got this a few times. Okay. Um. Well, for me, I've been wanting to do a podcast for a very long time. Yes. I love podcasts. I listen to many on a daily <laughs> basis. Some of them include um, Chatty Broads, their Bachelor Recap podcast, uh, Relax with Eric and Colleen um all things internet mm -hmm. um 
Oh, office ladies. Yes. Thank you. Okay. I love office ladies. I'm obsessed with office ladies. <laughs> oh my God. Okay. Um, but basically when I was younger, we would listen to, uh, the this Christian radio show every day on the oh. way to school and I thought I always had this thought in the back of my mind that would be so cool to work on a radio show mm -hmm. and well nobody listens to the radio anymore but you know what people do listen to podcasts, podcasts. so that was my inspiration behind it and I didn't want to do it by myself so yeah. I dragged Lily into it right my inspiration <laughs> for this was you said it would be really fun and you were super excited yeah. about it. So I was like, okay, let's do it. Because I don't listen to podcasts ever. I don't think I've ever, like, listened to a whole podcast all the way through, like, even once. Um, so this is all very new for me, but I'm having a really great time. Like, it's, like, what inspires me currently is, like, it's, like, bonding time. And it's super fun to just, like, hang out with your best friend for, like, however long it takes us to record these and i don't know it, Too like, long. it forces us to speak to each other when we would like to lay in our beds and sleep or watch youtube yeah yeah i don't know it, but it's really fun <laughs> yeah all right so that is reason for said podcast yes. okay um the next is not a question but somebody asked us to react to five sauce mm -hmm. uh or five seconds of summer i ding <laughs> <laughs> my phone dinged i thought it was on silent but i was wrong so i actually in i think it was seventh grade okay. went to a one direction concert it was either sixth or seventh grade i can't it was seventh grade yeah i went to a taylor swift concert in sixth grade okay. but um i went to a one direction concert and five sauce opened up for them mm. and that was kind of like my second experience i had heard their like breakout song i don't even remember what it's called because i didn't like it right. um but I, i've also heard i know what song you're talking about and i've yeah, I heard the same one the, not, the underwear song <laughs> yeah <laughs> i'm not a huge fan that's the only song i really know from them but yeah. i don't have enough experience with their music and also don't take that as like a bad thing because i don't listen to normal like pop music anyway so it's not going to be my type yeah. of music no matter what it is um i don't like five sauce um especially after the concert i didn't i thought they didn't do a good job uh, okay <laughs> and i was like why are they crashing this perfectly good one direction <laughs> concert oh so i'm sorry to offend all the five saucers out there i don't know what the fan base is called yeah. but um yeah no not my thing i tried i really did i i like to give music a fair shot but like yeah. it wasn't my thing so i'm sorry to disappoint okay our next question is what is our favorite book series this took me a long time to think about i don't think i even have one because like i think when i hit high school was when like i stopped mm -hmm. reading for fun because i just didn't have time Hmm. yeah same i haven't read a, a book in a um, while which is why it's really hard to think about i mean i read books and mm -hmm. i i have an issue where i buy a bunch of books and then i start all of them and i never <laughs> finish them so i'm working on finishing like three of them right now um but if i think that my favorite book series that i have finished is the hunger Games series i think i favorite, always go back to that i think my favorite series that i finished um it's one that i always had I always carry, carried it around with me in middle school. Um, the Lord of the Rings series. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I really love those books. Yeah, I never read all of the Lord of the Rings. I started the Fellowship, mm -hmm. and then I stopped. They're big books. Yeah, man. that's probably why. Um, <laughs> I don't know. I love to read. It's just, like, it's hard, it's to, it's hard to do it for fun when you're forced to do it for school. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, but I love The Hunger Games, and I love reading. <laughs> when i have the time <laughs> next question next question okay what are our future goals um <laughs> I, I know mine i want to play in a pit orchestra for musical theater kind of stuff um that's what i'm working towards with my degree right now is that's what i want to do as a career yeah but uh, I guess future goals aside from that, I want a future family goals. And a home. I want to lose weight. <laughs> I oh. mean, like, I don't like how far in the future are you saying? Yeah. I mean, I want to get my degree. Yeah, I want to live a happy life. Yeah, same. Yeah. Next I, question. I, yeah. 
<laughs> I don't want to get too deep with that. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, what are our favorite shows at the moment? Mm. Friends, always. That's Friends in difficult. the Office are my favorite shows ever. But I am... Oh, I finished Avatar The Last Airbender mm-hmm. a couple weeks ago for the first time. I loved it. Um, and right now, I'm in the middle of watching The Crown. Yeah. I just started season three, and that's really good, too. Mm-hmm. Uh, I really, really enjoyed The Office when we watched that. So that's definitely up there. Uh, I watch a lot of, like, cooking shows. So mm-hmm. I, I just love, like, anything on Food Network. Um, yeah. SpongeBob will always be a favorite. Oh, yeah. Of course. Um, yeah. That's, everyone loves SpongeBob. Mm-hmm. Except for Marty, for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, I um, think that's it. Question for Lily. What is your favorite Disney movie? This is a hard question, and it hurts my soul every time someone asks me it. I um, hate when people even ask me it. Like, I know my answer, but it's taken me such a long time to actually yeah, get my answer. I still currently have three because I can't choose. Yeah. Um, I love The Little Mermaid because I love the classic 2D animated movies. They're wonderful. Um, but for the, the 3D movies, I'm having a hard time choosing between Tangled, which is amazing, and I loved Frozen too. It was so good. I think Tangled should take the win. Well, I mean, I'm she doesn't like Frozen at all, so I she's biased. Don't. Not. And she still hasn't seen Frozen too either. I refuse. <laughs> I, I really, really liked it though. Um, yeah, and Mayan's Enchanted. Nobody They didn't, they ask, didn't ask you. me, but it's enchanted know. because it's underrated and I love it. <laughs> Okay, and then uh, somebody asked me, if I had to watch one musical for the rest of my life, what would it be? Um, This took a lot of thought. I've been thinking about this all week, and it would probably be Hamilton. Now, Hamilton is not Mm -hmm. my favorite musical, but it all goes back to freshman year when Hamilton was the very first slime video Ah, i ever got and for the longest time it was the only thing i would watch and sometimes still is okay so i would have to say hamilton because it's just like the more you watch it the more you get i think you're the one who passed off the slime tutorial to me as well i think so I, I, I got no it from idea. somewhere. It but. was not me because the file, the it, it's two files yeah, for have, Act 1 and Act 2. Google Drive. And the file is so, no, I don't have it on Google Drive. Oh. It's in my camera roll. Oh my gosh. <laughs> How? The file is so large, I can't use my tablet anymore because it doesn't work because <gasps> the file is so large. Oh my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> um... Um, and that same thing. I, you answered my question, so I'll answer your two. Yeah. Too. Um, I I I haven't looked at this question because it was for her, and I haven't thought about it. So I think it might be cats because I notice something different every time. Like there's so much going on in the background that you don't pay attention to. Yeah. There's lots of like. It's kind of the same thing for Hamilton because yeah. like, and my mom brings it up all the time because when I first saw Hamilton in Atlanta. She was just like, there's so much going on in the background. And then we watched it on Disney Plus. And she's like, you can't see, like, every little thing in the background yeah. anymore. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, and then someone asked, <laughs> what are our opinions on the socioeconomic climate in America? And to that I say, no comments. No comments. Hey! <laughs> yeah, no comment. <laughs> so that was questions and shout outs. Mm-hmm. Uh, we don't have any messages this week. Yes. But if you would like to send us a message, we love that i love yeah, that it's feature. on anchor so yes yes uh Please link is in our instagram that. bio um <laughs> so yeah i will ask again on the instagram this upcoming week for more questions please yes. send us more questions it was really fun getting to interact with you guys yes i yes okay so that's the end of the episode mm-hmm. now we're gonna tease next week's episode mm-hmm. next week's episode so as you might know this sunday is my least favorite holiday in the entire world or as i like to call it evil love day valentine's day evil love day <laughs> um, i like valentine's day i hate it because it's cursed we'll and get into that uh next week so next week is going to be a, an, an Evil Love Day themed episode. Yes. We are going to watch some cheesy romance movies that I'm mm. not excited about. <laughs> um, we're going to play a kind of evil love game 
themed game. Evil love game themed <laughs> game. <laughs> and sentence. I don't we're gonna try and make it as evil love day as possible. Yes. So super fun, super cute. Yeah, Maybe that should good. be fun. Keep an eye out on our Instagram for more updates. Mm-hmm. And yeah, that's it. Yep. Thank you so much for listening. Yes. Tune in next week Yay. when we will discuss why Evil Love Day is cursed. Ding. Ding. Thank you for joining us this week on Pop Culturing My Best Friend. Tune in next time when we talk about more stuff and things. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on Instagram at popculturingmybff underscore podcast for behind the scenes content and more. 